Vi har om allak. Alla om alla mot. Vi har om allak. Jag mig. Verkligen. Vi har om allak. Men kär vi inte till oss. Vi har om allak. Jag har om allak. Kurios till oss. Pente kretan. Kurios till oss. Bestås. Elda ett i hova. Jäl i mona i hova. Ibas lion kurios. Otios. Opanta kreta. Bas lios bas lion kai kurios. Kurion. Jehova dabar halal. Elohim dabar halal. Jehova Elohim. Gadol gadol gebura. El Elohim Israel. Isus Christos. Ton Christon isun ton kurion. Kurion ni mahagion panta kreta. Gadol gadol gebura. Jehova Ishmal kam. Jehova Shamma. Yel nakum Jehova. Yel nakum Yapa. Netzak Israel la sheker. Gava gava. Triembos Jehova. Isus Christos, Pantacreta, Gadol Gadol, Gebura. Mora Rosh Nasa, Elohim Elohim. Ville Lai Shalot, Jehova Malak, Jehova Malak, Olam Olam Ad. Jehova Eleheno, Jehova Ekad, Gadol Gadol, Gebura. Zaan Logan, Ogar Tautios. Dulas, Desmias, Despotes, Dikaiesune, and Jesus Christos. Kurion, Kurion, Kurion. Hagion, Hagion, Hagion. Numa, Panta Greta, Gadol, Gadol, Gibra. Derek, Emunabakar, Mishfat, Shava. The Megalogai of Yahweh, Elelion Elohim. Is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, a training in righteousness. That the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkenu to the highest. And peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath. In the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. As such, we are accountable in each and every day to give account to Lord God the Father. Not just of the account of the talents given to us in Matthew 25. As he said, to the five, two and one. But every day we are accountable. In Matthew chapter 25, we look upon this great verse which goes to teach to us emphasizing in verse number 19 Matthew 25 after a long time the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them the word reckoneth is called to be sun airo to settle the accounts in the realm of logo meant to say again account or what is been called to be in the process of each and every word or declaration what you have done for us 
Here in this context of the parables, it may refer to the five talents, two talents, and one talent. But for us, it's a day-by-day -day process of taking into the will of Lord God the Father, whether are we able to execute it or not. Therefore, every breath of you is been called into account. So in Proverbs chapter 23, as we were looking yesterday in verse number 23, do not surrender your day without buying the truth. You will be called into an account. The word buy we read, kana, acquire, possess. Be zealous enough to take the word of Lord God. You may get anything or anything else in this life or not. But if you are not getting the word of Lord God, be zealous and get it. The same thing which he said for us in Revelation chapter 3. Whomsoever he loveth, he goes to come to tell for them, I rebuke, therefore, and he chasteneth the two things he does. The first one, Aglanko, he convicts you with the proof of the word of Lord God. And then the way Paidion meant to say, how you are going to be training your children to mold the characters of him according to the character of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by proper reproof and admonition. So he does the both thing. The first one he said, Aglanko, which is called to be rebuke. And the second one he meant to say, Chastening. What is that? Which is called Paideia. He wants to train you up. Therefore he said, Be zealous. The same thing, zealous, kana, what we are missing today in our pulpits. He said, by means when to say what? Kana, zealous, in your English translation. And the word zealous meant to say what? From the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun. Have your vigor and valor in such a manner to acquire the word of Lord God. You are surviving here for the will of Lord God the Father. So what is the number one priority? Whether you eat or drink or not, or whatsoever the details of life you love to enjoy on this earth. Whether you have them or not, first be zealous to take in the word of Lord God. At any cost, buy the truth. Don't neglect the word of Lord God. The word of Lord God is your life. Don't neglect it. Buy it. Be zealous to get in the word of Lord God. That's the great thing tomorrow going to be giving an account to Lord God the Father. If not, you have been reading from Ezekiel chapter 13. The, the great two verses, verses 15 and 16. As we have taken the word from Deber, which meant to say the word of God. Earlier that place was worthless, but now we can find it to be a place for the word of God. In the conquest of the book of Joshua, mentioning four times in the entire Bible, ending up in the book of Amos chapter 6, emphasizing the place where there is no proper word of Lord God. That place I am going to spoil. So if you could take upon that word Deber, you would also realize on this Ezekiel chapter 30 in verse 15 and 16 as such how you have to give an account in your body to Lord God. The same conclusion what Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13 King Solomon teaches to us. So he said over here in Ezekiel chapter 30 in verse number 15 I pour out my fury. The word pouring out is nothing but when I look upon your thought process when I look upon, when you open up your mouth, you haven't been found to me like a scribe. That is what he goes to pour out. You may say, Lord, I was a disciple, because that is what you are by default. In John 1, 11 and 12, as he emphasizes to them, he gave the power to become the sons of God. You may say, Lord, I was a disciple. <laughs> but the wrath of Lord God pours out because you are not a scribe. You haven't grown up for Matthew 13.52. You haven't come for Matthew 28.19. That's the wrath of Lord God which he pours out upon you. So when he's pouring out, he wants to look your thinking. 
He wants to understand what is your process of your mouth which are opening up. So better not to argue with the people because they're going to just give you the tensions in this world. Look and understand yourself with the word of Lord God. And the greater you know the word of Lord God, the greater you become silent. As Job has been asked, come reason like a man tying up your lions and come and understand. Job chapter 38 in verse number 3, he said he cannot go to reason. Who can be giving counsel to Lord God the Father's mind? The best thing for us, simply humble enough to know the word of Lord God and become the scribe. Don't try to argue. Tomorrow your arguments are foolish. Lord God the Father knows them. Therefore no man can go to talk before the Lord God. He would be simply silent. Matthew chapter 22 verses 12 through 14. He will be speechless. He will be not able to give any answer to Lord God. So simply when he's pouring out his wrath or fury upon you, wake up to understand what is the wrath. You may be saying, I am a good Christian, I am such, I am this, I am that. And what is the wrath of Lord God abiding upon you? The first one, if you are not a believer. You haven't believed in the Lord God, John 3.36, the wrath of Lord God abideth upon you. If you are a believer, then you have failed to fulfill the mandates of Lord God and you should be so much thankful to Lord God the Father. Because he has given your body such a resistance, it will just hold back. Not as the things as these people go to say, this is the end. It will hold back another four times more. And the reasons of your early age sickness or some of the things is that you have lost out or you have exhausted out the four times of caliber in your flesh which God the Father wants to renew if you go back every day to carry his cross and fulfill his word. Just look at the simple example of Moses. Till to the age of 120 years his eyesight was not dimmed, neither his vigor and valor was abated. Therefore, there never was a man like him again. That should be a target in life. Look into the experience of Caleb. Though he was 85 years old, he said in him, I have the vigor of 40. They haven't become debtors. They become creditors. They did not exhaust out the limits of the flesh but they are renewing themselves in the vigor and valor of the knowledge of Bible doctrine day by day. And they went along to be so joyous and great in the, in the presence of Lord God the Father, as Philippians 4, 6 emphasizes, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. So when they rejoice in the Lord, they seek upon those things which have virtue, which have integrity. And what else could be on this earth in Philippians 4, 7 and 8 words which we look Emphasizing upon these things you think, there could be nothing apart from the word of Lord God. The things which have virtue in them, the things which have knowledge in them, the things which have the honesty in them. What it is, only the word of Lord God. So he thinketh to teach us rejoice in the Lord God and go on to add those things because you have to add on your great health by obeying the mandates of Lord God, by submitting everything into the hands of Lord God. What is your true health? No sin, then absolutely no sickness. If you have sin, you're going to have sickness. So having that sin, you're going to find sickness. So what is sin? The thing pertaining to missing the mark of the Lord God or the place of your body called to be the clay. Every time you sin, it becomes like a thorn which you haven't known. That's what we were looking yesterday. Anything that goes on to say for you in the standards of a thorn in this life, it is purely in this clay, which goes on to become as sin in you. But ultimately, God the Father says, rejoice in the Lord. Don't let go. Because every time you have bought over here, your enemy, your adversary, 
you cannot contend. You have been called to be trampling him down under your feet. So what does it happen with your adversary? Your adversary may try to come and put and change your path. It goes to give you many, many reasons not to obey the word of Lord God. But adversary is now just a slave. But every time the will of Lord God the Father is to give you to become disciple, disciple, disciple. Because if you're not able to become the wall of fortification as a disciple to the word of Lord God, sin develops. And when the sin develops, your body goes to rotten. Your body is not been given to end up in sickness. As many people are dying in sickness. Why? They have neglected the valuable word of Lord God. Remember the lesson of Yehoram in Second Chronicles chapter 21. How it becomes day by day. They go to become in the process of sin. And today also people day by day. They're not able to become the word of Lord God, to do the will of Lord God, to carry the work of Lord God, to glorify the, the maximum work of Lord God. But what they're doing, just sinning against Lord God. So day by day when they go to sin, what happens? The sin will lead to sickness. They don't come to repent their sickness. Because they are not zealous and repenting as Revelation 3.19 states. Whenever you find reproof, a glanco, come to the doctrinal discourse like a paedian. Mold your characters according to the demands of the word of Lord God. That's what Revelation 3.19 is all about. He said, repent whomsoever I love. The word love over here, which he emphasizes, is called philos. Again, it is not agape love, as people don't understand the importance of this. Because God the Father wants you to grow up from the standards of agape to the great standards of philos. He just doesn't want you to hold at a standard call to be 35% of marks in your life. But he wants you to become more, 35, double, 70, that's philos love. In John 15, 14 also, he says the same thing. If anyone love me, he will obey my commandments. You are my friends. He compares that to philos. If, it, if anyone doesn't love Lord God the Father, in 1 Corinthians 16, 22, he emphasizes them that these are the people what you can call as anathema, the cursed ones. And people don't understand about these things. So what is that philos love? He emphasizes over here also. First, he goes to convict you to the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And then he comes to tell you, learn doctrine. Because the word paideia, what you can call, it meant to say molding your characters by Christ Jesus of the Lord of God's word. In any man you will find default. Therefore, we are now called in 1 John 2, 6, not to compare yourselves to Peter or Paul or John or X, Y, Z. But it says now in 1 John 2, 6, as Christ our Lord of our God has walked, so you need to walk. How? Because of 1 John 3, 9, you have in you the sperm of Christ. Why? Because of 1 John 4, 4, greater is the one that is in you than the one who is in this world. So there is no excuse. You need to mold your character. You need to become the reproof for others by becoming yourselves a glanco in the Lord. You need to come back to that great process of admonition in the Lord God. So dear brethren, you have been called first to learn this education or this discipline because you are in the process of fila o love. Therefore, you're called to be in the process of making up your life to learn, to be instructed, and you can teach others as well. So this is the great job of which you have been called. Therefore, God the Father says, 
I I glanco, I go to give you reproof with the proof, then automatically come back to the process of becoming zealous. Because you people are not able to look upon the fury of the Lord God. Where does he pour out his fury? The reason why he pours out his fury is in Ezekiel chapter 30 in verse number 15. He says, Because you people are not grammatias. The Hebrew word is called to be safak. And the meaning of safak your thought process, and then now you open up your mouth. It's not related to being grammatious to the Lord. That's the reason how God the Father pours out his fury. And the word what he says, fury, it is called as kamas, that is hot displeasure, his great indignation, and his furious anger. So what is that he says? That which you have built up like a wall of fortification. Wherewith he says, my thinking, my standard is something superior than yours. My way of life, my thinking is far away than yours. You have built up your process of saying, just like a believer is enough, believing in the Lord is enough paying and coming to the church weekly once is enough. Doing this is enough. Doing that is enough. But my wall of fortification is not that. Therefore, Isaiah 55, you can look. His thoughts are far high superior than our thoughts. His ways are far high superior than our ways. It's just like a comparison between the heaven and the earth. Such is the difference between his thoughts and our thoughts. The same thing over here. Kamak. What does it mean to say? It emphasizes my way of thinking is far high greater than your way of thinking. And in my way of thinking, I want every believer to be instructed, that is to be growing up into grammatias, joined as disciples in the Lord. Matthew 13.52 So he says in Matthew 28.19, Go and teach, teach, teach. Make them to become disciples. That's called to be mantado. You know, we are not able to walk really as per the demands of the word of Lord God. And we are not holding truth in us. You know, the people who don't handle the word of Lord God accurately, it is better for them not to preach the word. Because they're just thinking, let's run this business. We are evangelizing and then afterwards they're trying to give them some uh, moral lessons of moral edification like the unbelievers, but they forgot to make you to realize that you are a great heavenly citizen of Lord God the Father with the plural of Paltima privileges, having to make known the world to understand what a great benefit it is when we walk in the fear of Lord God the Father according to His terms and conditions on this earth. You aren't able to realize them. You aren't able to learn them. You aren't able to know what exactly are the standards of such great life in Christ. You have been just taught because if you haven't known what are your powers, what are your privileges and what are your responsibilities, no man would walk according to the standards of Christian way of life. Therefore, you have been told over here in Proverbs chapter 7, particularly emphasizing this Proverbs chapter 8, emphasizing this great verse in Verse number seven it has to be. He says, For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my mouth. What is that wickedness? Which is called over here in the Hebrew as the word says resha. And the meaning of resha is nothing but your brethren to live the correct path. You know, when Christ the Lord of God in Matthew chapter 21, when he asks to that young man who is able to follow the Lord, he says unto him, particularly beginning with verse number 41, he said, uh, sorry, 42, Jesus said unto him, Have you never read in the scriptures? 
the word red is called again if you could look as ana ginisco you know the thinking of lord god the father even in john 1:18 to the people who have been there he says no man has seen god at any time except the son who would come from the bosom of lord god the father and would expound to us the scriptures what is the meaning of expound over there the origin of the word called to be exegesis exegomai again the word anagenisco to analyze and to go on to give you depth and accurate information which is very very important again to use the word because people will experience that and die for that and love for that you can be noticing that it is just common even among the standards of unbelievers as well because of ecclesiastes 99 what the word genisco is just a simple jewish idiom for sexual intercourse between a man and woman to become acquainted with that's what it is how we can get acquainted with the lord god if you haven't known accurately the standards of the word of lord god what does it meant to say even in the hebrew greek and arabic can give them that rich food if you are not preaching and teaching them in that path of the knowledge of bible doctrine the word of lord god says you have left the correct path such is an abomination to whom to the lips of the preacher but today you find how many people there are have been really in the process of preaching the word of lord god word by word line by line precept upon precept ayat upon ayat carrier upon carrier with the proper dispensing technique of dispensations mm-hmm. in the standards of exegesis isogogics and categories you can look literally that is gone out from the face of the earth but with lord god the father nothing is impossible he will make them once again to get back to the standards of making every church to get into the process of word by word line by line precept upon precept I think it's impossible with Lord God. The greater you reject to live the correct path, to the the greater you reject the correct path and to stay beyond the correct path. He said, "It's an abomination to my lips." And how many ministers are effectively trained today to know back in the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic? if not at least in the interlinear as we are teaching come back and look what is that word meant to say where it has been applied how it could be in the exegetical commentary you know this great words when he says how have you read because people love to look upon this word read something in the english but the greek says anagenisko genisko again the jewish idiom for which you have been telling to look and understand as a sexual intercourse between a man and a woman you just look how the world is thirsty for sex to drink as they love to clear the thirst of water greater than that they have thirst including among the unbelievers as well not only just to believers because god the father has given that as a gift because ecclesiastes 9:9 says that is the only joy what he has afterwards they have been destined for hell forever if they don't believe in christ in the lifetime what joy what pleasure they have only this being being acquainted with each other on this earth but not acquainted with christ so here you find ginisco what is the meaning of ginisco you have to be acquainted with lord god as it could be in the realm of truth 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 again you can find this great verse over here for us dear brethren which has been emphasized in psalms chapter 101 here you find in verse number 2 which is very very important he says over here dear brethren i will behave myself wisely in a perfect way and then he said when will thou come unto me i will walk within my house with a perfect heart you know the hebrew word what we can find over here perfect is called to be tamimem someone who is complete mature full the one who is upright the one who able to walk in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit in such a great standard that he doesn't want to let go and god the father trains you up till you could go back in the process of this bona fide gift of the pastor teacher to rightly divide the word of truth in the simple terms it meant to say perfectly dividing the word of truth and what does it meant to say mature complete the one who is well aware about the standards of this 
dispensations if he doesn't have the knowledge of this israelites in comparison to the church and again furthermore to the eschatological events he cannot handle the word of lord god therefore apostle paul says in ephesians 3 according to the grace of lord god i have become for you a dispensationalist if you have read these things you will understand again the word read over there in ephesians chapter 3 he emphasizes anaginisco and what does he goes to teach for us to be in the standards of the knowledge of bible doctrine Therefore, dear brethren, according to the grace of Lord God, I became a minister. The word diakonas, what does it mean to say? The one who is going to be in the standards of becoming the word of Lord God. Therefore, he says, when you read it in verse number 4 of Ephesians 3, again the word anaginisko, when you get thoroughly acquainted, when you have known about these words accurately, but you haven't learning them accurately. So he says, when you have read those words accurately, you may understand my knowledge. Therefore, he says in verse number two, if you have heard of the dispensation, ikonomian, and this word dispensation is nothing but your brethren as the house administrator, oiko, meant to say home, nomia, norms and standards. How we are going to handle according to the norms and standards in the church age? What are the qualities that have been given for us in the church age which haven't been given in the past dispensation of the Israel? We have been in by Lord God, the Holy Spirit. We have been given the completed can of scripture. We are compared to the chest vagina in comparison to the beloved breast of the Israelites in the, in the, in the terms of that dispensation. But now we are called to be the chest virgin. No matter how However, man may be involving himself in the oral sex, ultimately he needs to end up his thirst by going to the vagina. The same thing over here. He calls to the church, if you have heard about this dispensation, you have been given much more greater qualities than the Old Testament saints. If they would be called to be in the process, no one greater than John the Baptist in the Old Testament, then greater, the one who has been born least in this church age, is far high greater than what you can compare to John the Baptist, though he's been least why you have been called to be the chaste vagina for the Lord God the thrill is there and there is no fool who cannot accept this point you ask an unbeliever would he be satisfied to be in the realm of just having oral sex with his wife he would say no ask any fool ask any moron they will tell you clear in thirst to understand. Ultimately, they need to end up in intercourse. That's the reason over here he says, if you have heard about this dispensation in the church age of this mystery epistles, you are something far right greater than what it could be. Therefore, he says, do not end up the day in slavery without purchasing the truth. Be zealous. Every day be alert, whether you have food or not, whether you have clothing or not, whether you have shelter or not. First come to take up your cross every day and come back and do the will of Lord God the Father. If not, the distress of it will be daily upon you. You're accumulating day by day into the process of becoming for you as a great wrath of Lord God abiding. You know why? Because you have rejected the word of Lord God. And the greater you're enjoying your life, you may think you're happy to celebrate this, you're happy to celebrate that. You may say, joy, joy, joy in your heart. No, dear brethren, you cannot. Only when you have the word of Lord God, when you have fulfilled these terms and conditions, when you're able to walk according to his great word of Lord God, then only you can have this great joy. Therefore, he says over there, if you have read Anaginisko, if you have taken depth of knowledge about the standards of this dispensation, if you have heard what are you in the church age, what are the privileges of you in the church age, what God the Father can do through you if you have been able to walk in the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit then you will not spend your time in sin you would ask rather Lord take me out as early as possible in this flesh but you know why you need to reside in this flesh first to prove your proof and then afterwards you need to aglanco as many as you can with reproof chastise them in the process of molding the characters according to the standards of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so that they could become zealous enough and fulfill the great commission of my Lord God in going and making disciples of all the nations because of this great work of Matthew 13.52 which is compared to the kingdom of God.
You're not just to be like a disciple. You may say, I'm just a disciple. It's enough. No. Lord God's wrath and anger and fury is poured out upon those people who are not grown up to be grammatious in the Lord. That's very simple logic, dear brother. Lord God's wrath is poured out upon whom? Upon the people who are not zealous to become grammatious to the Lord God. You may say because of John 1, 11 and 12, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. So the word son meant to say, take none and I am a disciple. And you can tell tomorrow to Lord God the Father. I was a disciple of the Lord at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone and I become a saint. And I was much more happy in that realm. But how could you put me now into the standards of your fury or your wrath? Lord God the Father would say in simple terms, <laughs> you were not a grammatias. And since you haven't grown up to grammatias, when I come to take up my account with you, when I love to settle my accounts with you through the word of God, through the things pertaining to be the sofer or logos in the Hebrew, he says, you haven't been found worthy to go back and dig and take every word in anagonist knowledge as you were worthy enough to look upon the things pertaining to your thrill in this life in the flesh of your lustful patterns towards your wife if you have been legally married because people are having that lust. Just look in the world how many people are having the lust towards their opposite sex. And they will come to say in each and everything great poetry is or this or that in India, you can end up with a book called to be Kama Sutra. So you can understand up to what extent they would go to detailly describe everything about that female. From the top of the head till the top of the feet. Even the same thing we can find in the Song of Songs. How beautifully the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, describes about the woman. So you just want to be happy to understand your life in such way. But you're not able to understand your life to realize... Anaginisko, you haven't been acquainted with the Lord God. This wisdom, this knowledge, how you get you're going to get acquainted with the Lord God only when you are like a scribe. Day by day, just go to write upon the process of Bible doctrine. Look upon his word and you will understand how many things haven't been taught yet today in these pulpits. You know, we have one great word over there in the book of Acts chapter 27 and we know not how many people might have been preaching or teaching that. Here in Acts chapter 27, he says, beginning with words number 19 or 14 and following particularly, but not long enough after there arose against it a temptuous wind called Euroclidon. <laughs> You know why this thing? Because if you're rejecting the will of Lord God the Father, if you don't go to be as a sofer or a scribe, so that you can go back to dig and take every detail, every detail, even that word, as we're taking this word sin in the process of clay or thorn, of that place what we read in the present Memphis, what it is, you can look in that chapter of Ezekiel 30, what is the present place of that? In chapter number 30, in verse number 15, the present name of that place, what he called to be sin, it has been as, the word could be as Pelusium. The word Pelusium, it is not Memphis, but the word called to be Pelusium. So, you can look, what has happened to that place? The same thing over here, you can look upon the word called to be Euroclidon, what is that? It is not just the thing of a name, but it is called to be as a temptuous wind, like a hurricane, or the way how the people will go out to the standards of destroying completely with the power of that. So, dear brethren, you can find over here why that temptuous wind has come. Simple lesson. You haven't been obeying the word of Lord God to become like a scribe. You find in this life misery upon misery. Your age has been consumed. Wicked people are not even able to live. Wicked and bloodthirsty people. Psalms 55, 23, we read that. 
not even half of the days of their life. So this Eurocliden is just an example for them, for those people who haven't been able to perform the pale wonders of his word like a scribe, if you're not able to become anagonisco, if you're not able to read. When he said, if you have if you have read my knowledge, what is that read anagonisco? You cannot get that to be just like a disciple. You need to grow up to be a grammatist in the Lord. If you're not able to become a grammatist, you will never realize the words Proverbs 23, 23, which says, Buy, 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 be zealous at any cost. Be zealous and take the truth. Do not surrender yourself for the slavery, for the lustful patterns of the old sin nature. The day today might have gone. You might be thinking, so let it go. Because we had so much of busy schedule and we couldn't come to learn the word of Lord God. So he says, do not sell the truth but rather buy it if you're selling you become slavery for what in this occupation of life as he says the first three parables emphasizing the first the first three spots of the parables where the word of Lord God has fall it has fallen on the rocky soil the, the wayside it has fallen on the things pertaining to that which is called in the thorns and thistles. So this the third category, the thorns and thistles is your life because you have become slavery for what? For the details of life, but you are no way occupied to be in the obligations of this life. You know, you may say, how it could be? I am such and such for my family. I have to obey this. I have to perform this. I have to do that. Yes, but more than that, you have been owned by Lord God first. So how much you are lacking to fulfill the will of Lord God the Father? How much? You have ever thought on that? You haven't thought how much you have to be, how much you have to become the will of Lord God the Father to Christ first. The duty towards your Lord God, as he said Isaiah 43 7, I have made them for my glory. Then where are you being the glory of Lord God? So you may say, I'm slave for such and such relationship. So I have to do this, I have to do that. It's your obligated duty. But about than that, what is your great obligated duty? Your duty is to go and become the word of Lord God to these people. That's what your real duty is all about. But you're not able to become that duty. Then what happens? The same procedure, Euroclidon in your life. The same thing we can able to compare with the standards of Yehoram. The man who disobeyed, who did not wait, go to walk in the ways of Lord God. That's a very simple example for us in the life of Yehora. The man should have walked in the ways of Lord God by obeying the will of Lord God, but he did not walk in those ways. Therefore, in Second Chronicles 21, how did Lord God the Father affect him? You know, the logic is very, very simple. When you fail to walk as per the demands of the word of Lord God, then quite obviously, dear brethren, your Horam or Euroclidon will be your life. As Ezekiel 13, verse number 16, he said, Sin, Noah, and no pay will be the fate of you. Just simply, humbly obey. Don't go to argue. Don't go to give your reasons. Your reasons in the old sin nature, your reasons to please and to be comfortable for your way of life, your reasons. All these things may be good for you, but in comparison to the word of Lord God, they don't stand better anywhere. The reasons what you're looking, the reasons what you're thinking. Simply you will be speechless at the judgment seat of Christ. The sooner the better you follow to become conforming to the image of Christ for which you have been predestined in the Lord God. Romans 8, 29-32 With the bona fide help of the pastor teacher to whom the bona fide gift has been given. Ephesians 4, 11-13 So that you all could come to know the responsibility of this great burden of Bible doctrine upon your shoulders not just to become the standards of this earth but rather to go and become the will of Lord God the Father in making every nation his disciple. The sooner the better you go on to that journey of life. Simply don't try to give reasons for XYZ. Lord God provides. He makes you to be synchronizing for your family, though you have your family burdens and family responsibilities. He knows how to make up your time for the word of Lord God.
how to organize yourself because don't let that day go in slavery at any cost that's meant to say don't sell the day for what you're selling the day today you're selling for so and so reason just look and analyze if you want to know what you are think yourself as socrates could quote the same thing for you think yourself analyze yourself for what you think for what you are selling your day today for what you have sold it off and the greater you have been not the grammateers or grown up scribe unto lord god the father the greater the wrath of lord god is poured upon you and you are not able to realize the same clay what you have because of that clay you're going to have the experience of thorn because your clay what you can call to be the flesh is the greatest enemy for lord god your flesh itself therefore after believing in christ you're called to be the dogs of body philippians 3:21 through 22 and now what you're going to become you're going to become to await your resurrection body to be bought you're not just like this world now where the people are enjoying to be in the flesh you're called to be now the holy creation in lord god the father to be holy and blameless in his presence so what are you going to do in each and everything you're going to be according to the will of lord god the father to please him to glorify him to become his word so in everything you know what is the proper order proper procedure rather than becoming the sodomites the gomorites the bestiality again the new one the word they use now again called to be zoophilias <laughs> zoo meant to say the greek word zoo for life followed by the word philos philos meant to say love <laughs> this is one nature of the things which they have love towards the animals in the sense not having to take care but to have with them intercourse for their satisfactions so what for your selling your flesh don't become the standards of this world you're called to be pure according to the limits of the knowledge of bible doctrine that which is holy accurate perfect in the sight of lord god the father that is what you need to become at any cost don't sell your day in slavery every day two hours 40 minutes to lord god the father that will be not enough for you when you're growing up in the standards of bible doctrine that will not at all be enough you would say no lord i don't have time for such stupid things now He would say, "I need to spend more time with you, Lord. I need to learn your doctrine. I need to become your witness. I need to become that which is right and good in your sight. Because the life that you have given for me is simply your grace for your work, and all the responsibilities you may say. God the Father will look into it because He knows better. He can do better." he will work out marvelous wonders better than us so what we're going to do now every day take up your cross and come back to the will of lord god the father simply obeying the fact of the truth don't become like your horam experience don't become eurocline an experience in your life the reason over here why we take this word eurocline and dear brethren when paul says to them in verse number 9 now when much time was spent and when sailing was now dangerous because the fast was now already past paul admonished them the word admonished meant to say he calls them besides into the process of giving them some recommendation parai noio so what is that recommendation he advises them he exhorts them not to waste up your life in such way he exhorts them and what is that he exhorts and said unto them i perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage the word hurt meant to say with be having to be great injury either it can be in the process of mental or any other thing so he said is going to be into that great injury and a great damage called to be of a great loss and then not only of the lading and ship 
but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. You know, this Euroclidon is simply an example for you to understand when you reject the word of Lord God, what happens? Paul becoming the word of Lord God and telling to them, I pursue such and such things will happen. He said no. But now if you just look in the crystal clear combination of the entire completed canon of scripture from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21, when he said, crying out every day, daily carry your cross and come back and do the will of Lord God the Father. And yet you say, no. You say, I cannot take up that cross. Either I can come to become the will of Lord God the Father. So the logic is very simple. What are you going to face? Again, you're going to face great misery. Like once again, Euroclidon experience. Once again, your Haram life of experience. And that man is not able to recover back. Man is not able to learn that life. Man is not able to understand this great life for him. Very simple. You need to recover back. Nevertheless, is what you're doing. You're not able to look upon the instruction given for you by the standards of the word of Lord God. But you think, let me end up my day in slavery. Let me not buy the truth, but rather sell it out. For what you're selling your day, for what you're letting go your day, what is that great important for you than the word of Lord God? What is that major importance for you than the knowledge of Bible doctrine to acquire every day? Which is that that which is thinking that at the point of you to answer tomorrow's judgment seat of Christ, you could be justified for the reason you're selling that day without buying the truth? Euroclidon experience is awaiting for you, dear brethren. Jehoram's kind of life is, is awaiting for you, dear brethren. Because the people who were not obedient, who did not do the will of Lord God the Father, you just look them, they are having unspeakable misery. And tomorrow they are speechless to answer themselves. Why have they gone through that life? It is better for us to finish the discourse of knowledge of Bible doctrine, as Second Timothy 4, 7 would say, to fight a good fight, to give a great account to Lord God the Father, and to say, Lord, I have finished the race that has been kept before me with great grace of you upon my life. And Lord, if it had been no here, I have been better. We are unprofitable slaves. That's what he claims to come and ask in Matthew 25. In verse number 19, he comes to settle your accounts. With the five, he gets five. He said, good and faithful. With the two, he gets two. He said, good and faithful. But to the one, he said, you're sluggard, you're slumber. What it hasn't done, he did not go to excavate the truth. He did not go to anaginisco. He did not go to analyze. He did not go to become exegetical pastor teacher. If that is the only order for us, then your mouth is speaking abomination because you're not able to become exegesis to these people. If your mouth is not able to give them accurate information, you cannot quote Proverbs 8, 7, that, above, that the wickedness is an abomination to me. What is that wickedness? Anything which is able to make you to live the correct path. What is the correct path? Not to exegete. What is the, not to ex living the correct path? What is that first, for example? Pastor teacher not exegeting the word. Believers not carrying the cross every day and coming to the Lord. Women having authority over the men and saying that we are also capable. You know, all these things you are living out. If the Bible says the correct path is to exegete, the bona fide duty of the pastor teacher is to go back for exegesis. If the Bible says every day carry a cross and become the disciples of the word of Lord God, then the number one duty of the pastor teachers is to make sure that these people are coming to carry the cross every day and learn the word of Lord God. That's the correct path. And if the Bible says women shall not have authority over the men to preach, then the pastor teacher should not promote that. That's the correct path. Therefore, you can say now, there is no abomination in my mouth. Truth is there in my mouth. But how many of the people that are really practicing the truth today? If they're practicing the truth, then we would have evangelized the world, not just evangelized the world, we would have made them disciples of all the nations on this earth. And you know how they get the reasons. They say, Satan, Satan, Satan is there behind. <laughs> but the word says for us, Satan has become to be your slave. We read that in Ezekiel 28. Again, we are going to read that in the standards of making 
in Isaiah chapter 50 in verse number 8. Who is the one that is going to contend against me? And who is the one that will be my adversary? In this Isaiah chapter 50, when I have daily coming to learn the word of Lord God and not rebelling, but he said, if you have been there in the process, here he said for us in verse number 7, in Isaiah 50, he said, for the Lord God will help me, therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. You know, what a great word is that? He has been acquainted again the word yada, the Greek word oida, the same thing again called to be the Jewish sexual idiom for intercourse between man and female. So he says, he is near that justifieth me. Who will contend with me? Or who is going to say that he is abundant in wisdom and authority over me? When day by day we are going to get him to learn the word of Lord God, you may think, as Apostle Paul could say in Second Corinthians chapter 2, we are not ignorant about the cunning fables of Satan. We know the devices of Satan. That will be your lesson or that will be your life. So you are not worried about the cunning fables of Satan, though he may be having abundance of wisdom and abundance of authority to deceive you. You know now the authority has been given for you by Lord God the Father in heaven through his Son. Go and make disciples of all the nations. That same authority you have, which Satan thought to give to Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 4, saying, just bow down to me and I will give you this entire world. But Christ our Lord of God said, get thee out. The same exusia authority you can find in Matthew 28 verses 80 through 20. I have received this authority. What he says, go and make disciples. So you have that authority now. The authority greater than what Satan can think and compared to the wisdom you know first Peter chapter 2 in verse number 11 if you, oh, chapter 1 in verse number 12 if you could look the angels are rubbernecking to look what will be the wisdom so we have greater wisdom than what the angels want to look Therefore, in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 8 through 11, we have been said, the manifold wisdom of God right now through the church, which the church is, is ought to teach the principalities, the powers, the rulers and authorities, right now through the church. Right now. Right now, we need to teach that. And you know what we're doing today? <laughs> we are idiotic morons to compare ourselves. Because you think Satan has great authority and wisdom. <laughs> because the word contentment to say what over here in the Hebrew as rib. And the word rib meant to say what? To go on to complain against you. But Satan cannot go to complain against you because it says in Isaiah chapter 50, the pattern of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the way how he walked. As 1 John 2, 6 says, he walked daily carrying his cross. He was not rebellion. He was not disobedient. But he was day by day carrying his cross and come to do the will of Lord God the Father. Such a great life what he had. And he goes to give us that life now, to enjoy that life now. So he says, who is he that is going to contend against me? Or who is he that is going to be my adversary? Because the word adversary meant to say what? The one who could bind you as the master to the servant. You know, the yoke which binds the master to the servant. So who was master? You can think Satan now. To who was servant? It could be you now. So what are you going to do now? You're going to bind Satan. So there is no way you can fear. Trample down Satan under your feet. 1 John 4.4 4, Greater is the one that is in you than the one who is in this world. If Satan is not able to prevail, as we read that in Matthew chapter 16 in verse number 18, again in Genesis chapter 22, we read the great promise which has been given to Abraham that the people of you will go and subdue the gates of the enemy. The same thing in Matthew chapter 16 in verse number 18, we read that the gates of hell cannot prevail. Then how you are not able to grow up to become the will of Lord God the Father? How you have become frown? How have you become like those 40 days challenge of Goliath to the people of Israelites until David could come and tell unto them, emphasizing the point, who is this uncircumcised Philistine going on to challenge the living armies of Lord God? Until that time what they were? They were sore afraid. What is the meaning of sore afraid? They were not renovating the standards of the thinking. How? Through the proper exegetical Bible doctrine. And today, though we are in this 21st century, almost all nearing 2,000 years of the resurrection of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the pulpits are not able to stand up to the challenge of the work of Lord God the Father because you haven't been taught accurately the word of Lord God. The things pertaining to your life, if you could look, you haven't gone through word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, iota upon iota, carrier upon carrier, the passion 
the teachers of failed and UNESCO, they don't go to give you in depth of the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Why? They think coming weekly ones for some pieces of bread for some handful of barley is the ministry. If they're not happy with that, they go to look upon with the miracles, healings and tongues, but they're not able to be content enough to teach the word of Lord God accurately, word by word, line by line, no matter however the chips may fall. You know, grass may take little time to grow up, but bamboo sticks may take time to grow, but when it grows up, it will take time, but it will stand firm. Grass are today, by evening again they wither off. And today you'll find ministers who are teaching grass-oriented work. They're not making you to be like an oak tree. Every believer is compared to be like an oak tree. That's what your life is. You are called to be something great like an oak tree. Don't just compare your life to be like a grass. Your life is something greater to be like an oak tree. The big tree which stands firm. Don't give a life like a grass. And end up your life over here, having to worry about your families, having to worry about your marriage, having to worry about your children. Cast all your burdens of, upon Lord God the Father, and Lord God the Father will take care of it. But what you do now, first you be worried about his work. Because there aren't enough men like David who could face the challenge. And God the Father is saying, you're not just like David now, I want you to be like Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want you to conform to that image. Therefore, what I'm giving you, I'm giving you to inbell by Lord God, the Holy Spirit. I'm giving you to sanctify yourselves in the truth of the word of Lord God. But today, people are not able to realize <laughs> that much of the people's mouth are speaking lies rather than truth. So, dear brethren, he said over here in Job chapter 36, for truly, in verse number 4, For truly my word shall not be false. He that is perfect in knowledge, again the word tamiyamim, is with thee. And that's the bona fide duty of every pastor teacher. Again, you can look in John 1, 17 and 18, emphasizing the point. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Again, no man hath seen God at any time, only the begotten Son which is in the bosom of the Father, whom he hath exegeomai. Again, the word to the process of exegesis in our standards. You can find over here in John chapter 8 in verse number 45 and 46. He said, Because I tell the truth, you believe me not. Who, which of you will convince me of sin? And if I say the truth, why you not believe me? The same thing over here again in John chapter 14 in verse number 6. When Christ the Lord of God could say, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He meant to say for us to realize, sanctifying us through the truth. Again, the same thing in John 18, 37. He said before Pontus Pilate, I came over here to bear the witness unto the truth everyone is of the truth will hear my voice and today people are not happy to listen the voice the same thing in revolution 314 he said to the church of laodiceans write these things amen and the faithful the true witness the beginning of the creation of God, the thing pertaining to your life, you have to be the true witness for Bible doctrine. Therefore, who is he that is going to contend against you? Or who is going to be in great wisdom and authority over you? No one, dear brethren, because in this church you have been given great authority, the authority of what Satan calleth exusia to Christ. You have been given greater authority than that to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Therefore, he says, your exusia authority to be strengthened day by day, the dunamis power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, 2 Timothy 1, 7, because you have been given the spirit of power, he says there. So having the dunamis power, you're going to exercise your exusia authority day by day. And coming to the wisdom... <laughs> You should simply laugh and say the cunning fables of Satan and tell Satan saying that you cannot let me go today without having the word of God. I challenge, I bet I will take the word of Lord God today. I will carry my cross. Don't know the time, but I will go to take up my cross. I may be occupied with my family, but I know the time when I will take. I will put extra time. Four to six hours of sleep is enough. If I could spend more time for me in my lust or in the process of this life, I will just cut it short. Because we are just on this earth for the pilgrimage trip. You know how these people, they're trying to live their life. 
Having to cover your nakedness, you're having your clothing, that's enough. But they're trying to get the wedding garments clothing right now on this earth by trying not to have purely your wedding garments clothing in the presence of Lord God the Father, which is to attain for your soul and spirit completed in the presence of God's thinking or his mind in your confirming to his image. They don't want that cloth. But what they want on this earth, they just don't want to cover their nakedness with some manner of time on this life, which could be for a temporary pilgrimage trip, so that that cloth is enough just to be covering their nakedness. But they want to appear beautiful. They want to appear attractive. They want to say the standards of the social status or the financial status to those clothes. So people, what they will think if you don't have better clothes. And you know what they do? Because of this analyzing of the standards of life, they're letting go the valuable time. And Satan knows very well how to make you, whom are trying to impress. The people who have holes in nature, the people who have nothing but urine and excreta in their body, if they could come back and open up their mouth to be like a dead body smell in their mouth they're trying to impress such people rather than impressing Lord God so cut short that time over there put your time for Bible doctrine cut short the time for the quality of food you can serve to the people emphasizing the standards I will be eating up with a silver spoon silver plate so what you will do with that Researchers are coming back again to say, eat up, cook up your food in the mud plates or the mud bowels or mud vessels. They will be good for your health. Researchers are telling that if you're suffering with any kidney problems, if you're having any such diseases called to be in the present as hypertension or diabetic, he says, in simple terms, cook your food in the earthen vessels or earthen pot which has been given for you as Jeremiah has been told go and look upon that pot the one who is able to do that so he says learn the lesson from him four or five times he's going to crush it till the desired images come that pot that pot he says cook your food in that the researchers are coming back to 50 or 70 years back what the life was oh, almost all 80 or 90 years back so you love to eat in your silver spoon or silver plate and you say, I have such this, I have. So for that, what you need to do? You need to work hard to make money. You know, a status symbol, trying to please others it is. But what is your spiritual status symbol in the presence of Lord God the Father? How wealthy you are. Tomorrow, what are you going to do? Though you earn a great treasure on this earth, what could be greater treasure than the knowledge of Bible doctrine which you can earn on this earth? Apart from that, whatsoever you may get on this earth, even the kingdoms to rule or X, Y, Z, all those things are nothing before the word of Lord God. You know, the great lesson what we learn from the great teachings of David to his son Solomon. <coughs> it has to be in First Chronicles chapter 28. He says, With Lord God the Father are all the things, the things pertaining to <coughs> that which has been there, the wealth, the riches, <coughs> He says over here in verse 10 of 1 Chronicles 29, Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and forever. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, Gabor strength, the glory, what you can call over here. It is not Kadosh, but Tifara, meant to say the beauty and the splendor. And then what does he say now? The victory, the majesty, for all that is in the heaven and in the earth are thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and you have exalted us above our hall. You look into this verse now, verse number 12. Both riches and honor come unto thee, and thou reignest over all. And in thine hand is the power, again the word called over here, coat strength. The power is when you become like a grammateus, building up a wall of fortification to the word of Lord God. That's the real power. And Gabor strength, might. In thine hand it is, O Lord, to make thee great and to give strength unto all. Now therefore, O Lord of our God, we thank thee and we praise thy glorious name. And David humbles himself as he does that in First Chronicles 17, emphasizing, Who I am, O Lord, you have given such a promise to me. Where I was, where you bought me and kept. You know, the same thing for every Gentile believer. What we are, we are nothing. Where we are, we will be just nothing but the all sin nature man. Where we were and where we has bought us and kept to sit in his throne only when we obey the word of Lord God and to become the will of Lord God. The such great riches he has promised us. If you could look upon that great verse in Ephesians chapter 2, 
In verse number 4, he said, But God, who is rich in his mercy and his great love, wherewith he loved us. You know, he's getting, in, he's, he's getting you and sitting you in his throne. If you would follow the, the first seven standards of the churches, what he's been told for us. In Revelation chapter 2 and 3, I will make him to sit in my throne. I will give him a new name. I will make him to be a pillar. I will make this. I will make that. Why these things he goes to promise us? Because you can become the word of Lord God to these people. You know what a marvelous thing we have for us to serve the Lord. Only fools can say they cannot serve the Lord God. We have such a marvelous thing to enjoy. People are searching for silver spoon. People are searching for high status clothes. People are searching for high status symbol. I don't deny if God the Father gives you graciously, you take it. If not, don't spend your time in need of them. You have enough of time to gather in the word of Lord God to buy the word of Lord God. You have enough guts and courage if you would challenge you to buy the word of Lord God, then take it. Don't become slaves to the details of life, slaves to the lustful patterns of the old sin nature. They are drawing you out because such and think it, he is having great authority and wisdom over you to contend against you, to file a case against you. But he says in Isaiah chapter 15 verse 8, who is that man who is going to contend against me? When I'm coming every day to carry the cross, I'm not rebellion. I know my purpose. I know my vision. I know my power. I know my limits. I know what is the work which has been pending for Lord God the Father. So what you do, you're having greater authority in the exusia standards of the word of Lord God. You're having greater wisdom than the will of this stupid Satan, what it loveth to all the time, drive you out from the work and the will of Lord God the Father. You know, the only thing that standeth forever and forever, it is the word of Lord God. So Satan tries to attack you not to make the word of Lord God to be conformable to these people. It comes to give you all mannerisms of delay tactics. That's how Satan does. Every time it cometh, it cometh to give you delay tactics. It says you should have good name, good fame, good clothing, good shelter. All those things you have to live one day, dear brother, and remember. Alexander the Great. You can understand his life. Everything you have won on this world, you have lost your own soul. What do you will do for that? You may have a golden tub to bath. What do you will do if you don't have your soul being well preserved in the Lord's mind? People like Joseph of Arimathea, they're able to buy their own place for burial. <laughs> Saying that my burial should be in such and such place. My burial should be such and such thing. But has your name been recorded in the book of life? Have you been out from the second death? And yet, you are not interested to know what is your life. So he says over here in the Eurocliden incident, what Paul answered, they did not obey. Yehoram did not follow the footsteps of his father, Yehoshaphat, who did in Second Chronicles chapter 17, saying and sending those Levites or those priests place to place by walk and training them up in the word of Lord God. This same Yehoram failed to follow the footsteps of his father and God the Father struck him day by day with such sort of sickness in his bowels that he died sin unto death. No point of recovery. You know, with Lord God the Father, there is a grace for you. Come back. If you have known today, at least like the thief on the cross, the moment you're dying, come back and repent. You'll have the forgiveness of your sin. Confess your sins. Come back and repent. Change your mind. Because the will of Lord God the Father, none to perish, but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of his glory. Come back and repent. He will not prosper, as Psalm 66, 18 emphasizes, those who hold or regard iniquity in their heart. They will not and never, pro they will not and never prosper in their life. The same thing after believing in the Lord. If you don't confess your sins and get back to the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you cannot learn doctrine, neither you can come back to the senses of reality. And that's how these people they are today. Just look. And what are they doing today, dear brethren? All the days of this life. 
trying to please each other, trying to impress each other, trying to make up your life to say that you have been very good enough with the old sin nature of the other man. What are you trying to get with the other man? The old sin nature in him which is there, which resides, which goes to pop up to say negative and not to be good. You're trying to be pleased with him. You're trying to be comfort with him. You're trying to be great with him. And you're saying that's really great and awesome. No, dear brother, you cannot. What is man that you are mindful about him, said the Lord God. He made us little lower than the angels and he calls us to his great work. But what are you doing? Selling the truth, no jealous for the truth. You know the true love, he says, between the standards of the lovers. It is more jealousy than the death. But you don't have jealousy more than the death because the lovers will die, their flesh. The eternal word is a true love. Where's the jealousy? Are you jealous enough to carry your cross every day and come and come to learn the word of Lord God? Are you jealous enough to know the will of Lord God? Are you jealous enough to understand today I have something more to learn in the knowledge of Bible doctrine? I cannot reside in my clay by the thorns when I reject the word of Lord God and be pricked by those thorns. I have to be very zealous enough to go back and take the word of Lord God every day. Have you been able to look that? Have you been able to understand that? Are you zealous enough? Can you examine your hearts? On the other end, you are jealous for what? <laughs> Jealous for your food, jealous for your water, jealous for your clothing, jealous for your name and fame and reports in the society. <coughs> Excuse me. In Second Corinthians chapter six, when he writes, having reports of such standards of stupid things, he says, simply having the reports of righteousness to the right hand or to the left hand. He says all these things in uh, Second Corinthians chapter 6, by pureness, by knowledge, by long-suffering, by kindness of the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left hand. Having you are such great by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers, and they're true. People may think you're a deceiver, but you have to be true to the Lord God. So, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful and always rejoicing, as poor at making many rich, as having nothing and at possessing all things. You know, if we don't have anything but we have Christ, that's the plural of religious, that's the plural of Baltima privileges for us. We have nothing but we have everything. Being poor at making many rich, and that's not the richness of our life, the richness of His glory through His Word. So He said, O ye Corinthians, our mouth is open unto you, our heart is enlarged. You are not straightened in us, but you are straightened in your own bubbles. You know the word straightened here? It meant to say stenochoreo. And what is the stenochoreo? It is called your brethren. If you could look in this Hebrew word, it says as the process of being pressed or narrow. So how are we going to become pressed or narrow? He says, having pressure upon your body like the bull energy which runs over you. So he says over here in comparison to the standards, Oh, you are not narrowed in us, but you are narrowed in your own bubbles. You know, the energy like a bull which always tries to put you into that pressure. That's the word when he calls over here for straighten. 
So what happens further in the straighten process? You will be far away from the reality, meant to say what, you will be impatient. What happens to your bowels? You become absolutely to be the desires of the flesh to be fulfilled. So he says, now for a recompense in the same, I speak as unto my own children, again the word technon, to be disciples. Be you also enlarged. That meant to say what? Become more welcome and embrace you in love. Come and take the word of Lord God. Buy the truth. Don't sell it. So become more. So be you not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? What concord hath cast Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will make their God, and they shall be my people. You know what does he say? In all of these things, you are not to be equal yoked with unbelievers, so but rather come back and become the word of Lord God to these people. So furthermore, he emphasizes over here to teach. Wherefore, come out from among them. You be separate, again the word aphorizo, to make your boundaries, to make your limit, to go back to be in the process of becoming as limited or separation of yourself. Be you separate, said the Lord God, and touch not the unclean thing. Then I will receive you. The word receive meant to say, I decomai, to receive kindly, to treat with great favor. So when you separate and you touch not, that is, not fasten yourself once again into this stupid life. So, and then he said, and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons. Again, the word called sons over here, adult sons, the sons who have been 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 witnessed by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, as the Spirit of Lord God beareth witness with your human spirit that we are the sons, sons of God, meant to say adult sons being led, and being the witness of sons, meant to say again there the word technon, which is called to be disciples. So as sons and daughters, the word daughters over here, to get here, meant to say, denotes all mannerism of female child so said the lord god and therefore having these promises dearly beloved let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh which is called defilement of action which is happening in your flesh and he uses the word spirit. What is that filthiness? Every time grieving and squelching and vexing and lying and resisting. Therefore, he said, resisting Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Therefore, he says, perfecting holiness. Again, the telelios followed by the word epi, to have more perfection. Where in the holiness, how in the fear of God. As a wife reverence her husband so that fear of God because you're called to be as a chaste virgin to Lord God the Father <laughs> so dear brethren if you're still selling the truth you're not zealous to Lord God the Father in order not to sell the truth you have to be zealous Every day, if you're not able to make up your life to know the word of Lord God, then for sure, dear brethren, Eurocliton will be your experience. Yohoram will be your experience. And yet you say, what is their life after death? We have seen. That will be the stupid, strange answer from your mouth, a question from your mouth. Because the word of Lord God teaches to us in simple terms. Every day we need to get the great thinking of the knowledge of Bible doctrine to be our life. Fear God, obey his mandates. This is the fate of man, for man has been destined to that process. And if we don't fear God, and if we don't go to become the will of Lord God the Father, and for sure, dear brethren, you are the one who is going to face the thorns in your flesh as misery. So think over these issues and which way you want to go, you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. So with our head burned eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those of without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to to Lord God, the Father, in the privacy of your soul, that you believe in Christ, my Lord, by rock, my Savior. 
That's the moment itself. We shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for so very simple. The living Christ, we shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine. By which you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to carry Satan Lagan. Herald the word in season out of sin because the diamond from my witnesses where they have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses in the Lintinity fall by Bible in our hands. And number two diamond from my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, nobody besides nature, the entire angelic host will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the shapes may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God, the Holy Spirit, leadeth us, to the praise of His glory, in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, what a great privilege it is, O Lord, to redeem the time in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, at any cost, to redeem the time you have told us, that is, to buy the time, buy the truth you have told us, O Lord, rather than selling it off. Many people in this foolish standards of this life, they're letting go the truth, O Lord. It is thy will, O Lord, to show them favor and grace according to the pale grace of riches in abundance and glory, so that, Lord, they could come back and understand once again your great plan and desire, so that everyone should be saved and everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of your glory. But it, O Lord, according to the will and process of this life, we pray the mentoring minister of God, God, the Holy Spirit, to give them the chance and to give us power and authority to talk more and more according to the word, so that we could simply train them up according to the will, using your fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to all make for the glory. So, Father, we commit everything into the mighty hands, being thankful for this time and grace and privilege that you prepared and kept for us in today's day to pass for this message. We pray, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to enlighten and challenge us by the standards of the word. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord, the Lord God, the Holy Spirit challenges by these things. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord, Amen.